So, hey, great to see you. I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, uh, Board of Selectmen to order. Uh, it is supposed to be a joint meeting. No. Uh, no. What we decided is, since they're coming in at 5.15, uh, if you open your meeting, we'll hear the town okay. report, and at 5.15, right. we'll hear the village report. Okay. And at 5.30, these guys will start back to Montpelier, where it's safe and warm, and dinner's waiting. We really noticed you guys do have at least twice as much snow as we did at Montpelier. We're living in paradise. Man. We're, we're special. We're very fortunate. We're very special. We're special. I know it's the holiday, and ordered it specially just to brighten up the village. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> that's motion good. to open this meeting. Motion has been made and seconded to open the, the meeting and to uh, the first order of business is the review of the FY19 audit from the auditors. Thank you for inviting us. My name is John Mudgett from Mudgett, Jeanette, and Crow Wisner. This is our lead auditor on the project, Tyler Kimberly. Uh, and uh, I know you have a draft that we uh, had sent down, I believe it's dated November 12, uh, and uh, I'm sure you have notes in the margin and things to talk about, so we won't, uh, we won't uh, bang on you too much, but I know Tyler has a few things he will highlight, and uh, then we'd like to basically make it a round table discussion for as much as you guys would like to ask about it. Sound good, Mary? <laughs> Just come back. <laughs> sure. You have a little group. Very good. Very good. Um, go for it, Tyler. Okay. I am just going to briefly touch on the governance letter. It's a three page document. It's like this. And this is a um, simply a communication. Um, it actually highlights. Um, any uh, change? Looking at the governance letter, I don't know if you have this document. Yeah. Um, let's just stay with the here. It might be in the back. I think you're stable for the back. It might be in the back if they were if they came together from mm -hmm. the I do have an extra copy or two. Is that this one? It's yes. 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 Yeah. If you don't have it, if you don't, I probably have it. Right oh, let, let me just make sure that's not the one I've made any notes on. But, uh, thank you. Go for it. Um, Does that say town or village? Just, just this is like more. Yeah, there should so, be okay, one so for this town. town. Uh, um, just wanted to highlight a few things in this letter. Um, the audit took place between September and November time frame, more or less, there was um, there was a lot of information that kind of had to get pulled together. So that was part of the reason why the audit took three months, more or less, to complete. And um, on page two, you'll see that there was a new accounting standard. Um, to summarize this <coughs> accounting standard, uh, there were some additional requirements for disclosing debt so some of the debt that the town has, um, you'll see an additional paragraph in the debt footnote that um, basically describes a scenario if the town were ever <coughs> defaulting on its debt, what would happen to the debt, and what is the town's plan for funding the debt. Um, so that was just one change, really not a big change from a town reporting perspective, but that nonetheless was a new accounting standard. And there were several adjustments that we proposed in the audit, mainly just to bring everything together for this report. Um, the uh, ambulance. More, more entries, than, more entries than, than prior years, I think, is, is the point we probably ought to make. Yeah, that was a just, lot. Yeah, it was a, that, that, that uh, surprised me when I mm -hmm. realized how, uh, how, how many accounts needed to be corrected. Some of the significant changes from these adjustments <coughs> were to um, record capital assets and depreciation, uh, just long-term debt balances, the Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement System. Um, there's a report that uh, the town and village get from the state, and the activity in that report um, 
gets reflected in these town statements, so there were several adjustments to get that activity reflected. Um, the property tax revenue in the town general fund had to get adjusted because it's, the general fund's not on uh, the same basis of accounting as the government-wide statements that you see on the first couple pages of the statements. So there was an adjustment there. Um, and there was a National Park Service grant. Um, it was about $74,000 worth of revenue that was being shown um, that really hadn't been spent yet, so it was deferred with a proposed audit adjustment. So those are kind of the highlights of what the adjustments were made up of. On page So uh, yeah. the adjustment for the end, what's what, what you started to say that the, the Oh, um, yeah, so the, the ambulance, um, there's a software that tracks all of the calls and billings and payments, write-offs, all of that activity. Um, that system is not the same system as the town's general ledger, which is used to more or less prepare these statements. So there are two systems and they don't talk to each other. And the activity, or the reports, from the ambulance system and the general ledger system, they didn't agree to each other. So there were some reconciliations that had to get done and that activity had to get squared away. Um, looking forward though, it'll, it'll be a change because um, you will see the ambulance activity in a separate pr proprietary fund in future years. Right now it's just part of the general fund, um, but it's gonna get broken out. So that might help with that Thank you. reconciliation. Thank you. That is a change. It is coming up. It's not a change for the, these, these statements, but it will be in the future. <clears throat> there is, and I'll we'll just quickly highlight it, there is a material weakness that you'll see, and I will go over that. And that, that really is all I wanted to highlight from this report here. And the next report is the town's financial statements the notes and independent auditors report that I want to <coughs> go over. Um, just looking at the table of contents, you'll see on pages one and two, you'll see our independent auditors report. And there's not too much to highlight there. It's in what we call an unmodified opinion. Um, basically, in plain English, we didn't identify anything in the statements that depart from the accounting requirements or reporting standards. And so, so what we're saying it fairly presents fairly present. the financial position and operations. Of the it's, it's, it's sometimes what we call a clean opinion. I do want to highlight one thing in the draft that you have on page 18. You will see on page 18 of the general fund shows a net change in fund balance of 181,618 to the positive. That number actually is going to change. Uh, it really should be 107,000. So your fund balance of 155,043 is going to go down by about $74,000 in change. And that's as a result of that National Park Service grant money that you got in FY19 that you didn't use, you're planning to use it in future years, so that just simply moves to another uh, category, goes into a deferred... I'm sorry, Tyler, can you... I missed a little bit about the grant that you took here. Oh, okay. So the town received um, money from the National Park Service. How much? It was 88000 and change in total. And in FY19, the town only spent about 14000 or so. So there's about $74,000 that hasn't been spent yet that the town is planning to spend in future years. So simply that 74 was deferred to the future years. So that affects your fund balance. So it's gonna change. Just wanted to highlight that. So, so in taking it out of revenue, it winds up on the balance sheet as a deferred revenue item and, uh, and uh, will flow back into operations as it's being spent. It's, it's really a matching thing, because then in future years when you have those expenses, you'll have revenue to offset those expenses. Um, so it's really a timing thing, just to match things up okay. from a reporting standpoint. So. 
on page 30. Let's one to quickly highlight. You will just see um, a paragraph at the very bottom talking about that new accounting standard that I just mentioned. And then on page 36, at the very top, you're going to see a new paragraph in the debt footnote number nine that just gives um, a little more detail about the town's debt and what would happen in the event of a default and what are the town's plans for funding that debt in the future. <coughs> um, just that new accounting standard I just wanted to highlight. And the last thing I want to highlight in this report is on the very last page, page 66, you will see what we call a material weakness, um, just an audit finding, something that we noted during the audit. Um, on page 66, that first paragraph, it describes um, the scenario that, that we had. The town every year should be doing um, an inventory of what it has for capital assets. What it has, like how many, uh, what, is it, what does it have for vehicles, other equipment, um, and then take that inventory listing and then prepare what we call a capital asset depreciation schedule that's used for these statements and note disclosures. Um, that hadn't been done and um, to my knowledge, there was no year-end inventory that was done um, to see what exactly the town does have for assets. Um, I think best practice, you know, every year, you know, should be done just to keep this schedule up to date. So, um, at the request of town management, we more or less put together an asset and depreciation schedule, and um, it was reviewed by management, and then it's reflected in these statements. And uh, we we would just recommend that. Every year, the town do an inventory of what it has, and then um, either town management or an outside contractor, someone other than the auditor, put together this listing um, that can then get used to update the financial statements and notes. And that listing has a value? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's detailed on page... Bear with me, I'm scrolling over here. Um, it's detailed on page 31. 31 and 32. Yeah, it's footnote number four. And this, this footnote details out kind of by general category like land, construction and progress, buildings and improvements. You'll see total capital assets net of depreciation in the <coughs> governmental activities is around $12 million. And then capital assets relating to the sewer activities in total net of depreciation is around $13.5 million. So the listing supporting this schedule hadn't been prepared um, at the end of the year. And uh, the first thing to start is to really do a year-end inventory to see what exactly the, the town has. Did it get rid of anything that it had from the year before? Did it add anything? Um, it's really key that, that that gets done annually and then get used to basically update a schedule that this, this footnote is, is preparing <laughs> off of. Is it something that we've usually done? It is, <coughs> yes. Um, we, we normally don't get it right off, but it is something that we are provided with which, you know, should, should normally happen. Now, those additions and retirements can be updated at any time throughout the year, yeah. of course. Yeah. It's, it's uh, normal to probably wait and do the final calculations at year end mm -hmm. and calculate depreciation at that time. Uh, and those numbers wind up uh, not in any of the individual funds, but they do go okay. into the, the government-wide assets that uh, are shown back on page 11. Uh, and that's, uh, that's both for the so-called governmental activities as opposed to the business activities, which is really where the sewer fund shows up. Now, 
if, if you if you hit the highlights of changes, are there things people have questions about or would like to know more about? Or have you seen? I, I know that we have reviewed in house, and since that November draft, have made some changes. Some you highlighted, and some were more just typographical or correcting spelling and that kind of thing. Uh, but if there's anything you've seen that you think we ought to pay more attention to, don't hesitate to bring it to our attention because the more eyes, the better way. There is one more minor change that you will see. Uh, I, I didn't mention it, but I'll mention it now. In the sewer fund, the interest revenue didn't include, it was off a little bit. Um, what page you If you look at page 13, I guess, I guess, yeah, yeah. Page 13, you'll see a line called investment income. Um, in the business type column, you'll see a number 9,163. That represents the interest earned on a sewer CD. That 9,163 should really be 10,173. So just a small change to the, to the upside, to the sewer, sewer funds net position. Those are the highlights. Those are those. Yeah, those. The government-wide statements on pages 12 and 13 are, are useful at the end of the year, and I think when the statements go out to be read by others, they tend to look at those quite a bit. But I know that as you do your budgeting, you don't look at the government-wide at all. You tend to think about how are we budgeting the general fund? What are the expenditures that we're that we're budgeting category by category? And those details are really back in, in Schedule 1, I believe it is, Tyler, if I got that right, where it goes on for quite a number of pages of, of individual budget categories uh, compared to yes. actual results at the end of the year. And that uh, begins actually on... Yeah, page 42. 42. Yeah, that's very detailed. So it's a 13-page detailed schedule. Very detailed, yes. So if there are particular areas, as you, and I know at this point you've probably done a lot of work already on your budgets, and, uh, but you have no doubt looked at it in this level of detail for the coming year. while they while the auditors are here um, I just wanted to address the ambulance adjustment um, that Tyler was speaking about this is the software the two different softwares that don't speak to one another historically those have not been reconciled it really has kind of come at a June 30th um, total and then there's an adjustment made so we were um, made aware of that while the audit was happening and that has been something that we're able to rectify going forward in the next few months. Um, so we know that um, this, is it TriTech? Is it, what's the software? Um, yeah, and our um, general fund need to balance, and that's something that we're prepared to do um, moving forward. So we're aware and we have something in place for that. We also, he had mentioned the assets, the capital assets. Those were not done at the end of June 30th, and um, we knew that going forward, and we had simply asked if they were, would be able to do that for us this year, given that we didn't want to fall behind. We were in a good forward motion, and we were keeping up with um, all the bank statements and, um, and everything so we again are aware that that needs to be done um, but we did ask them in advance if they would be willing to to do that for us with this particular audit it's not a normal thing um, we're aware of that and going forward we'll have that prepared for them so I wanted to ask one question on the ambulance part mm -hmm. is that um, software that we're going to have to purchase so nope. do we, we ha have it we have it we do and it will be in a separate account <coughs> than how we've been doing it. 
or has it always been that way? It has always, if I can answer, <coughs> yes, it's always been that way. It's just um, not been something that's been looked at terribly closely. It's really something that's kind of been done after the fact, that adjustment. So going forward, there are some systems in the place that that will get reconciled monthly. So we're not looking at things a year after the fact. And since we started the discussion, our elected auditor is here. Joe, do you have any questions or comments? No. no. <coughs> I, have a, I have a question. Can I ask another question about page 42? So I just want to check my understanding of this. So the first column is the budget that was approved by the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second column, what does actual budgetary basis mean? So actual, um, obviously, how it came in, and then budgetary basis, um, if there were, basically it's, it's kind of, or the, the, the attempt is to show this in a format in terms of how you budgeted for something. Um, so if you, like capital reserve spending, I think there's a separate category for that, versus in the gap statements that start, for, you know, um, that start on page 14. Um, well, actually, really, the, the irony is on that page. I think uh, while he's looking for that, generally speaking, there can be a difference between the way communities budget as opposed to what GAP would use for a description. Okay. And generally accepted accounting principles would, would be referred to often as a gap basis or a, a okay. generally accepted basis. So a budgetary basis is exactly what this is. It's lining things up against the budget. So right now we, we're working on our budget for 2021 <coughs> and we're working on actuals from 1819. Can we use this column of actuals as a for June for 1819? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you want to see what the differences are, um, if you compare page 42 to page 17, you'll see the line items. Page 17 is in, a, is in more of a summarized format, but you'll see the amounts have been kind of reclassified to a gap basis, what we would say, on page 17. So you will see a line, uh, third from the very bottom, it's called capital <coughs> outlay. That represents, um, assets purchased by the town that are that have been capitalized so um, you know they could be in any one of these expenditure categories they've just been moved to this capital outlay classification to adhere to Gatsby reporting so that's you know one, one of the things one of the differences you will see um. and then I, I can ask another question about that the, the one that um, I missed when I came late so the National Park one where is that shown? That is in intergovernmental on page 17, that 1296330 number. Now, were you asking about the revenue or, or about the expenses that had been paid? Um, I don't remember getting anything from the National Park Service. I'm wondering what it is. Uh, I believe it's for just general forest improvements around the park, if I had to take a stab. Okay. But um, yes. I have a better Yeah, response. it was the um, conservation Morning. for the parks, and we received about 88,700-ish dollars. That will pay for um, them to hire interns to help out with the park. It will be their um, oh, salaries. Okay. It would be um, when we, right, when we travel that. for okay. that. Yep. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so it's not like you, you don't have that $74,000 that was taken out. It was simply uh, deferred. So in a future year when you actually have an expenditure, you know, that's going to be funded by that money, you can then show a revenue to offset that expenditure. So that's simply why. That's a case where they actually pay us in advance and then we... Right, they've advanced you the funds and you simply haven't used them. We use it as it's billed. And, and actually, with most grants, if you get money in advance like that, uh, you may not really own it. They may have a right of return if you do not spend it for what they granted it to you for. Okay. So that's that's why it's the theory behind why it's being deferred. So in the summer, we approved 
some money that was spent for the National Park for the intern, then that's what the part that we utilized. Uh, it sounds right. Tyler? Candace is over here agreeing with uh, that. Yes. Now, I would mention that while we talked about the detailed 13-page budget to actual presentation uh, and Schedule 1, uh, there is a summary of that also on, up in the year of the front on page 20. If for those who are just looking for an overview of what the budget to actual results were, revenues, expenditures, and other funding sources. Uh, and that, uh, so if you look at the page 20 summary of the budget and actual general fund, that's really a budgetary basis. And then if you need detail, you go back to that schedule one, you can track any one of those categories down to the individual account level as it's shown on the books here. So we received more than, we, we, the actual was higher than we expected in revenues? That's exactly right. The, uh, the, when the oh, budget okay. was developed, uh, obviously there were some things that weren't known and one of the bigger lines in there is the intergovernmental or the which is the intergovernmental grant revenue uh, where apparently it was budgeted conservatively and then a significant uh, greater amount was received okay. and recognized in revenue. But then we also spent more than we expected But then you turn around and spend it so you wind up both uh, so down. with actual Revenue being higher than budgeted and actual expenditures being higher than budgeted. Okay, but that so we're down uh, against budget, but then because of the other financing sources, we're actually up. Yes. Yep. You had yep. some some debt borrowings that boosted it. Um, just bear in mind that 181,618 number mm -hmm. is really 107,082. Because of that national party the grant change. Yeah, on that early draft, they had still had the grant revenue for the unexpended grant, and then that was deferred, so that number is no longer quite okay. as attractive. So does that turn into funds for next year? Yes. Yeah. As long as you spend. See so that with a grant, unless you spend it, you haven't earned it, oh, so you don't get to keep it. Right. So about, was it 70,000 of that is the grant? Yes, 74, I think you said. 536 that. has been deferred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if I can just interrupt, that money is already allocated to certain areas. They've actually given us a spreadsheet and let us know where that money is going to go. So we know that that will net out, that will okay. be at a zero balance. So really there's only 23 of that. 26, 33 of that. Just one other question. Um, when you were here, we talked about maybe some consolidation of the no, 10 pages of yeah. detail, and yes. I was interested in your public support for that. No, it seems like we've gone on and on for uh, pretty insignificant stuff that could be consolidated. Yeah, I think uh, with a new the new town manager coming on, um, it'd be a great time to take a peek and see what you know, the needs are. And I, I, I have to say, you know, for oddities that we you know, work on, the level of detail in this report is huge compared to what you know you, you normally would see in another so, town. So yeah, there's definitely um, areas that you could scale down the detail. It would help save time too. Um, it, would, it, would, it, it, would, it would save trees. Save trees. Yeah. Save trees. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a lot of time that goes into, um, and, and I'm not suggesting it, I'm just pointing it out. Wait a minute here, are you suggesting we cut the fees? <laughs> no, no, well, no. I was no. hoping for something. <laughs> no, no, I was just saying. you got to keep a rain, close tie on this guy. <laughs> there, there's a you lot of late. <laughs> Always looking to get out of work. That's not. No, 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 no. No, I was actually really thinking um, from from management's end too. There's a lot of time that goes into reconciling between the general fund, sewer fund, and this capital reserve fund. This capital reserve fund is basically holding oh. amounts that are from the general fund and the sewer fund. It would be, in my mind, a lot easier if you just 
got rid of the capital reserve fund and moved all those back between the general fund and the sewer fund, and you could still show some schedules, but you wouldn't have nearly as much accounting complexity. So from a management standpoint, that could really help streamline things. Yeah, that's kind of the page, page 37, 38, and 39, yeah. talking okay. about how the, uh, how the, uh, those fund balances are allocated for future use, and what's been used this year, and what's been deferred to future years. Quite a bit of that is probably a good candidate for reviewing and deciding, do we really need as much detail there? So when we have a new town manager, a uh, municipal manager join, would you come and give them your viewpoints on how this could be redone? We well, can certainly, yeah, I think the, uh, what it really comes down to, of course, though, the town manager or, or a municipal manager here works for the boards. Mm -hmm. So it's going to come down to what do the boards want to see, how much detail do they want to see, and then, you know, it kind of flows from there. Mm -hmm. We can audit on any level, uh, but as Tyler noted, there is more detail here than right. is, is, is required and more than we often see. But it does look good. Yes. And, and hopefully it answers questions just by reading in that level of detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? What would you like to I guess. My signals from the village is that they ought to get their turn here before our They're regular ready meeting at five. There you go. Except Any other questions? Hi. Mary? I'm good. Thank you, guys. Good. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jeffrey. We will step away. No, we don't have to. We just need two seats. You don't have a forum? Uh, no, we're going to take the. Uh, we're going to take. You can have mine. Yeah. Yes, I actually have. You are welcome. There's a pen in here. Oh, I call it. Where would you like no, to sit? It's just me. It's just me. Uh, it's just me. It's just me. It's just me. It's Good. How are you doing? Good. 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 Fellow trustees. Okay. So she's the she's the newer member, so she gets to do all the work. Is that Jane's work? Uh, I don't I'm think so. I'm not the newest. Not so the newest. Not down. the newest. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Um, are we ready to? Yes. Yeah. Love to hear your report. Okay. Great. Uh, I'm John Mudgett from Mudgett and Edinburgh Wisner. Uh, Tyler Kimberly has been the lead auditor on the. Uh, on the uh, both the town and the village project for several years, yeah. and uh, so we will be here to talk to you about whatever we've seen and answer any questions you may have uh, as to what you've seen. I know you have a draft that's dated November 12, and uh, we have reviewed and. There have been some changes made to that draft. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think in the village's case there was much that affected dollars, no. but uh, uh, we do review it, we check our numbers, we check our spelling, wording, formats, all that kind of thing. So, but whatever you've seen that you think ought to be addressed, we would like to hear about it. 
and uh, incorporate any changes that you uh, I'll start off by saying on page three, copy page three, just for going forward, I think we need to uh, update the, the manager's discussion and analysis in terms of what uh, services the village provides. What do you know of the department maintenance? We receive state funds. We transfer all of those funds to the town. Okay. So uh, perhaps we can see what our funds were getting income on the production. You know, why not our maintenance? This Thank you. Yeah. Are you keeping the sidewalks today? <coughs> the sidewalks really are maintained by the town. Oh, really? Yeah. They're, they took over the, uh, the, the maintenance of the town and sidewalks. The other things, the uh, parks uh, meeting still fall in the house, uh, but by the physical maintenance of the town. Mm -hmm. you know, if someone wants to meet there, there's some things for us. Okay. Uh, some street lights are us, the rest of the green light power. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Public safety is still absolutely right. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So I'll let you see it. Uh, Tyler, why don't you give them the, the brief update on uh, what we've got here and changes that you're aware of. I seem to just have the December draft myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the governance letter, I just want to highlight a few things. It's a short document, maybe at the very end of this war, the documents. Um, yes. That would be yeah, it. That would be it. Um, this communication simply goes over some highlights or any highlights that we have really from the audit. Um, the audit happened between September and November timeframe. It took several months to just kind of put everything together and produce the statements and notes that you have here. And there were s and not, not too many audit adjustments. Um, we proposed 12 audit adjustments in total. Um, those audit adjustments really had to do with reporting some uh, pension activity from the municipal employee retirement system, um, adjust some uh, long-term liability, or not long-term liability, but um, capital asset balances, uh, permanent fund accounting, and some minor amounts that are due between the town and the village. There was one restatement to the village general fund, you will see, and that was $75,647 um, for the downside of the general fund fund balance, and that was I was restating last year's balance restating last year's balance yeah there's a there's a note footnote that discusses it in detail on page 29 footnote, yeah, footnote number 11 and this details the effects of the general fund fund balance you'll see uh, if you're looking in fiscal year 18 audited statements and reports the general fund would have shown a fund balance of 98,558 with this restatement, it is now showing 22,911. It's a decrease of 75,647. What happened there was in fiscal year 18, money from a park and ride grant came in and was shown as revenue. And it should not have been shown in, is in revenue in fiscal year 18. It should have really offset a receivable that had been recorded at the end of FY17. So it's just a, we, we missed it and management missed it. So. So the money was actually spent no, no, had already been spent. in fiscal 17 mm -hmm. and had been approved. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's 18. So we had to. So we pulled it out of 18. Pulled it out. And mm -hmm. Pushed it back into 17. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And it came up when we were looking at receivables at 6:30, 19. We saw all these amounts. We're going, "Whoa! I thought they already got this money." And then, lo and behold, they had. And so, mm -hmm. anyway. Okay. <laughs> Um, so that, that was a pretty big change for the village. It's a pretty big swing in fund balance. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what we paid. Mm -hmm. And that, there is a material weakness, which I'll, which I'll touch on here shortly. And that was really what I wanted to highlight from this document. And now back on the financial statements and notes, I'm just looking at the table of contents. Uh, you'll see our auditor's report on page 22. 
Uh, you'll see an unmodified opinion, nothing really to highlight there. Uh, I need a clean opinion. That's, a, that's the good news, right? That's the good news, yeah, that's okay. good news. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And the, uh, I, I don't think you've had anything other than an unmodified or a clean opinion in recent years, have you? Yeah, no, I, I can think it's, it's been that way a lot for, for, for a number of years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no deficits in the funds, so that's, that's also good news. <coughs> and page 26. Just want to highlight a change that you will see um, in the draft that you have. The vehicle is an equipment line that totals five hundred nineteen thousand four twenty-five at the end of nineteen. Uh, that should really be five hundred twenty-one thousand two hundred eight. There was a police cruiser that was purchased in FY nineteen, and then an older police cruiser that was discarded in FY19. So I just want to note well, that. Well, discarded, was it? Probably Actually, it was sold, sold for 4,000. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <coughs> so that's one change. And then the vehicles and equipment depreciation line that totaled 410,308 at the end of the year, it should really be 387,661. And that's just to reflect that new police cruiser's depreciation and then the um, Removing. The removing of the old police cruiser depreciation. 4308 should have been what? 387,661. So, really, the only effect that that has, it doesn't affect your fund balance. Um, it's just going to affect the government wide statements. And that will be. So, on page 11, your total net position will go up from 1,545,000. 379. It'll go, it'll go from 1,545,379 to 1,569,809. And then on page 12, the decrease in that position of 154,869 is really going to be 130,439. Uh, right now, the, the change in that position, it says 150. Oh, net position. Okay. Yeah, net position. It says a decrease of 154869 That includes that police cruiser expenditure, and it should not. So it should really be 130439 and just include the depreciation of the police cruiser instead. So okay. just want to highlight that. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is the material weakness on page 41. Um, and as we probably explained in prior years, the material weakness is, is, a, is a deficiency in internal control. But it's, it's, it's considered by auditors to be pretty important. It's, it's, it's so the this highest inventory of assets uh, similar to what you were talking about? Yeah. Yes, so exactly. It's actually exactly, exactly yeah. the same. The same, okay. same finding was in both because the, the, the work is being done with basically the same manner. And, and uh, uh, this year they, as was explained earlier in the town session, uh, uh, your audit team was asked to do it simply in, as a time thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as a general rule, though, that should be maintained during the year and updated and corrected and reconciled at the end of the year. So it's it's in the books before the audit takes place. And then a year-end inventory, basically going around and seeing what you physically have, too. That's just good good control. That's just good, good control. <laughs> as a matter of fact, uh, if, if uh, from a board oversight uh, position, you could always ask to take a look at what's in that inventory yourselves and, and you know, it would be good to familiarize yourselves with what uh, what the assets of the town are or mm -hmm. the village are. You could go around and spot check. Something you recommend annually. Yeah, certainly. It's, it's a, on an annual, it's an annual event, that's the best practice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Now, the report, of course, that on page 39 and 40 of what precedes that finding. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the other report that I was right. Uh, when you're looking at internal control as part of our audit testing, uh, we, we uh, 
are looking to see if we see deficiencies in internal control. And if we do, then we gather facts and upgrade them. What we're really trying to do is determine how much we can rely on the control structure and, and policies and procedures in place as we're testing uh, account balances. And so, balances. item 2019. <laughs> Is that's referring to the funding plan. Okay. What we just talked about. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Uh, I, I suppose the good news with that report is while we did identify a, an internal control matter that we labeled material weakness and in internal control, uh, the second section is probably more important when it talks about compliance uh, because as when they're doing their tests, auditors are also looking for instances of non compliance. Mm -hmm. Uh, either with laws and regulations or with contractual agreements or grant uh, uh, requirements, that sort of thing. And they did not find any to report in that section. That's always good news. Mm -hmm. yeah, a few couple people. of questions. Um, one is uh, under investment income, page 37, for instance, revenues mm -hmm. uh, under endowment fund. Zero so the I don't understand that. I, I know that the village is supposed to get a percentage of the Rockefeller endowment fund. Yeah, so um, the funds that the Rockefellers gave to the town and the village um, in lieu of the you know, property taxes because mm -hmm. then they gifted the land, right? So, so that's making up for that. Um, it's sitting in a Vanguard portfolio. I know that. It's all mutual funds. Um, Does it show up in here anyway? Uh, yeah, the, the piece of the increase is that 26000 24 Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, but but there is a certain percentage of it that's actually taken out each year mm -hmm. to offset. Yeah, you'll see a transfer out of 9500 right? Uh, let's see, in the other finance. Oh, that's, oh, that's from the endowment. Oh, right, right, that's right, what right. I'm looking for. So, so uh, well, you asked about investment income, uh, that kind of piques my interest it too. It's a form of income, is it not? Because <laughs> while the increase in value is obviously in the same direction, and uh, mutual funds sometimes would report investment income and an increase as separate uh, components, but I guess in this case they did not. Is that what your recollection is? It's all, in, it's all just combined in one. Um, one there okay. used to be the account with um, State Street would break out. Of course, they had a different investment uh, makeup too. It was individual stocks, so the dividends coming in, and now it's just mutual funds. Oh, okay. So, so the, the gain on the mutual fund during the year was the twenty-six thousand twenty-four, and the uh, and then ninety-five hundred was transferred out to be used in, in other uh, areas. Yeah, it was actually transferred to the to general fund. Yeah, it's transferred to the general fund. Yeah, and it's trying to find. Yeah, if you look on... There's a note on transfers. Actually, there's a note. Yeah, that would be better. Which is on page... Page 27. Um, that table at the top, you'll see the transfers out of 9,900 from the permanent fund. That's made up of net 9,500 plus the other permanent fund components, uh, the old fire station, or the what kind of, um, that 9,900 is then transferred to the general fund, so that 47,559 is... Yeah, <laughs> oh, so that goes to the general fund. Yeah, so that 9,900 is, is in that 47,559 number. Transfer in. Mm -hmm. Finally, you know, you refer at one point in here uh, to a permanent fund. Mm -hmm. Where's the permanent fund? Actually, that was the permanent fund. Yeah, page, the permanent. Yep, pages 36 and 37 simply detail what is in that permanent fund. So how much of that permanent fund is available that's not committed? Well, I think uh, the answer to that is not much. Yeah. Uh, when you look at, uh, for instance, on page 36, yeah. and you're going across the different one, two, three, four, five categories, all of the fund balances, which is the you know the assets less the liabilities, uh, totaling 427,000, it's all 
considered to be restricted. Well, those are, yes, because mm -hmm. they're yeah. for certain purposes. We yeah. think of using the sidewalk front, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. All parts of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I should correct and say restricted for specific purposes, mm -hmm. uh, which might make it available to use for that kind of thing. What, what you really need to know is what are the restrictions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there, there, yeah, we have access to that. Where, what is unrestricted in the field? Well, clearly general fund, not committed, budget-wise, yep. 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 or to yep. anything specific. Yep. If you would add, um, A quick way to see that would be... Page 13. You will see the general fund reports Board assigned balances of 26,103 at the end of the year. I'm just looking on the last line on page 13 in the fund. Uh, you'll see fund balances restricted and assigned. Mm -hmm. You'll see the general fund that says assigned of 26,103. Yes. <coughs> Capital reserve fund of 95,728. That's money that the board has set aside for specific items. So the board could always reassign. Reassign. Re yeah. They are currently. Yeah, yeah. They are. So, so that's really the answer to the question you asked is, in terms of what's available. That line is available to the extent you get agreement on how to mm -hmm. reassign or, or, or use for the purposes that it may have been assigned for, which are detailed back in the notes. Uh, in that, uh, toward the end of the notes, there's a table. Yeah. Page 28 has a pretty, actually page 27 and 28. I should say detail that. Footnote number nine. At least disclosing the current assignments. Assigned. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the things in there probably are, uh, well, depending on what plans are for the future, some of them may have more immediate need than others. For instance, when you look at one for planning and zoning, which has a what, Forty-four thousand uh, dollars assigned balance. Uh, it, uh, you, you probably have a better idea, as we're sitting here, what future needs might be for that money, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's <coughs> that's an area for discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, snow blower. I see snow blower on there for another fairly concise chunk of money. Mm -hmm. And when you had mentioned earlier uh, this evening about who's maintaining, uh, you know, roads or sidewalks or whatever. If there's money set aside for snow blowing at that level, well, maybe it's not needed for that. I don't know. Something well, to, something to the snow blower is only used in the village, so. It, it, oh, there you go. It's, it's the big machine that clears the streets. Yeah. yeah. And this is, was probably set aside for replacement. Yeah. All right. So um, does our village auditor have a question? You had one. No question. No, no, no. Okay. Um, that's it then. Well, thank you for having me. I got to say, I always appreciate coming to uh, Woodstock. Because one question. Oh, sorry. At the end of last year, um, you had some concerns about our personnel levels in our county office. Mm -hmm. office. Everybody's been working very hard. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that we're now adequately staffed? Do you feel? Still in well, that's a hard question to answer because I know that in, that in getting ready and getting caught up, you guys used a significant amount of consultant time. Uh, Cynthia from Nemerick was in here quite a bit. Uh, I, without her, I don't know how much more you might need in the future. I'm guessing, and it's just a guess, that as you go forward, uh, you know, certainly Zoe and management's going to have a better understanding <coughs> if things are being kept up to date, and that's really where it comes down. I can see year-end and journal entries and all this stuff to prepare these statements. It, it might not be a bad idea to have somebody from the outside just come in and help with the year-end closeout, because that normally demands a lot more than the day-to-day -day during the year. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.